the strength of hydrogen bond the order of the strength is in front of you these two orders they are very important for an, for them series the hydrogen bond between f and h that is strongest then nh but in case the hydrogen should be covalently bonded to oxygen that will be on second number then with o third number and this one will be at the fourth number so this order you are required to keep this order in your mind it means the strongest hydrogen bond is present in hf this one this one is stronger as compared to that in water but the overall effectiveness of the hydrogen bonding that is much more in water due to the reason i have already mentioned in case if the hydrogen bond is compared with other inter and intra molecular forces then ionic bond will be the strongest then covalent bond then hydrogen bond and weakest will be the other van der waal forces like dipole dipole forces debye forces london forces etc what are the applications of the hydrogen bonding now the first application is about the hydrides hydride hydrides of group 4a 5a 6a and 7a all these hydrides are the covalent hydrides in which the hydrogen will be covalently bonded to other element 4a has carbon silicon germanium tin and lead is also there in 5a nitrogen phosphorus arsenic antimony and bismuth in 6a there will be oxygen sulfur selenium tellurium polonium is radioactive so we are learning it in 7a fluorine chlorine bromine and iodine astatine is radioactive so we are again learning it when you want to prepare the hydrides these are the hydrides of group 4 here are the hydrides of group 5a these are hydrides of group 6a and these are the hydrides of group 7a and what is required we are required to discuss the thermodynamic properties suppose we are taking example of one thermodynamic property that is the boiling point so as we move down the group because atomic size increases polarizability increases and the overall strength of the van der waal forces that also increases so that's why the normal trend is that when you move down the group the boiling point will keep on increasing in case of 4a minimum boiling point will be of methane and maximum will be of hydride of the tin in 5a 6a and 7a this normal trend is slightly disturbed because in 5a ammonia in 6a water and in 7a hf they show maximum boiling point and the remaining all these all they show the normal trend mean when you will move down the boiling point will further increase according to the normal trend the boiling point of ammonia water and hf that should be minimum but it is in reality maximum in their respective groups why just because of the hydrogen bonding so this is the graph as you move down in 4a the boiling point keeps on increasing but in 5a 6a and 7a you can see that these three hydrides they are present at the top and that is their anomalous behavior and it is just because of the presence of hydrogen bonding and you can also say that water exist in liquid form while h2s is a gas so this difference is just because of the presence of strong hydrogen bonding in water but the weak dipole dipole force is in h2s <clears throat> now the next is about the solubility so in case of water all those substances they get dissolved easily in water that can form hydrogen bonding with it like in case of ethanol it has oh group it can form hydrogen bonding with water so it will be miscible or soluble in water sugars due to their oh group they are also soluble in water amines due to their nh group they are also soluble in water so all those substances that can form hydrogen bonding with water just like you can say in case of ethanol 
सो एथानोल एंड वाटर दे शो हाइड्रोजन बॉन्डिंग विद ईच अदर एंड दैट्स व्हाई द एथानोल इज मिसिबल विद द वाटर एंड आल्सो यू यू ऑलरेडी नो दैट द लोअर मेंबर्स ऑफ द कार्बोक्सिलिक एसिड्स फ्रॉम कार्बन नंबर 1 टू कार्बन नंबर 4 दे आर आल्सो सॉल्युबल इन वाटर ड्यू टू द hydrogen bonding so you can say that if water is a universal solvent it can dissolve most of the substances in it its property is related to the hydrogen bonding now the next application is the structure of ice suppose that we have water at room temperature it is at 25 degree c you cool this water then up to 3.98 degree c when you will cool down the water its volume will decrease and density will increase at 3.98 degree c the water will be having maximum density when you will further cool this water at 0 degree c there will be a dynamic equilibrium between water and ice at 0 degree c you will observe the formation of ice but from 3.98 to 0 degree c what will happen at 3.98 degree c the water molecules were free in their movement but at 0 degree c when the water will be changed to ice the positions of the water molecules they will be fixed and because the position will be fixed so that's why there will be 9% increase in volume because the volume is increased so density will be decreased mean i will say that the density of ice will be less than that of water that's why the ice floats on water and it is very important in the case in the areas where there is very cold so the pods and livers you know there is a layer of the ice on them and that layer of the ice is insulated it doesn't allow the atmosphere to decrease the temperature of the water beneath that layer of the ice so the aquatic life they can easily live there <coughs> no as i have said there is 9% increase in volume suppose that we have 200 cm cube of water when we have 200 cm cube of water we have changed it into ice now what will be the volume of this ice as there is 9% increased so out of 100 9 cm cube and out of 200 18 cm cube will be increased and now the volume of ice is approximately 218 cm cube and the structure of ice you know that is again an important mcq that is just like that of diamond the next is the application of the related to the biological molecules in case the logical molecules we discuss two one is the proteins and second is the dna in case of proteins you know that proteins have a secondary structure in which the polypeptide chain is coiled this secondary structure that is shown in front of you people that is actually alpha helix now the secondary structure of this protein it is maintained by the hydrogen bonding and hydrogen bonding will exist between oxygen of carbonyl group and hydrogen of the amine group this is very important to keep in mind that where the hydrogen bond is present no the secondary structure of the protein is maintained by the hydrogen bonding but the primary structure is maintained by the peptide linkages <coughs> let us take the second example that is dna you know that dna is 
double helical in nature and there are nitrogenous bases guanine is complementary to cytosine thymine is complementary to adenine keep one thing in your mind that these guanine cytosine thymine adenine these are all examples of the amines these are nitrogenous bases but organic as far as their organic structure is concerned that, that they are amines between g and c you know there are three hydrogen bonds which are present a and t there are two hydrogen bonds which are present so the secondary structure of the dna is also maintained by the hydrogen bonding and keep one thing in your mind that the primary structure of the dna is maintained by the phosphodiester linkages i will ask a very simple question to you whether this hydrogen bonding is intermolecular or intramolecular what do you think first of all i think so that this hydrogen bonding is not intermolecular rather it is intramolecular hydrogen bonding because this whole alpha helix is one molecule of the protein proteins are polymers and that is one polymer or one molecule of the protein so that is intramolecular similarly this is one molecule of dna and the hydrogen bonding is within the molecule so the hydrogen bonding in proteins and hydrogen bonding in dna that is example of the intramolecular hydrogen bonding now keep one thing in your mind that hydrogen bonding is not always intermolecular hydrogen bonding may be intermolecular or it might be the intramolecular hydrogen bonding there are some other applications like what's about the paints and dyes you know that adhesion that is one of the most important property of the paints and the dyes and the paints and dyes adhere to the surfaces paints adhere to the walls or to the surfaces on which or at which they are applied and the dyes adhere to the fabric now this adhesion of the paints with their respective surface and adhesion of the dyes with their respective surface that is also due to the hydrogen bonding why honey and glue are very thick their thickness is also due to the hydrogen bonding and at the end <clears throat> the cleansing action of the soaps and detergents if you take soap from the market and without water you start rubbing it on your face it will not clean your face because water is required for the cleansing action of the soaps and detergents every soap and detergent they have two portions one polar portion and one is the non polar portion the polar portion forms hydrogen bond with water while the non polar portion forms london forces or van der waal forces with the stains so the polar and non polar part polar part combined with water non polar part combined with the stain so collectively they play the role and they perform the cleansing action this was all about the hydrogen bonding and it is one of the very important concepts so keep this in your mind give me your feedback thank you so much allah hafiz